Part One of Agamemnon by Aeschylus, translated by Edmund Doidge Anderson Morshead, eighteen forty nine to nineteen twelve. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part One. Dramatis Personae, a Watchman, Chorus, Clytemnestra, a Herald, Agamemnon, Cassandra, Aegisthus the scene is the palace of atreus at mycenae in front of the palace stand statues of the gods and altars prepared for sacrifices a watchman i pray the gods to quit me of my toils to close the watch i keep this livelong year for as a watchdog lying not at rest propped on one arm upon the palace roof of atreus race too long too well i know the starry conclave of the midnight sky too well the splendours of the firmament the lords of light whose kingly aspect shows what time they set or climb the sky in turn the year's divisions bringing frost or fire and now as ever am i set to mark when shall stream up the glow of signal flame the bale fire bright and tell its trojan tale troy town is tame such issue holds in hope she in whose woman's breast beats heart of man thus upon mine unrestful couch i lie bathed with the dews of night unvisited by dreams ah me for in the place of sleep stands fear as my familiar and repels the soft repose that would mine eyelids seal and if at whiles for the lost balm of sleep i medicine my soul with melody of trill or song anon to tears i turn wailing the woe that broods upon this home not now by honour guided as of old but now at last fair fall the welcome hour that sets me free when ere the thick night glow with beacon fire of hope deferred no more all hail a beacon light is seen reddening the distant sky fire of the night that brings my spirit day shedding on argos light and dance and song greetings to fortune hail let my loud summons ring within the ears of agamemnon's queen that she anon start from her couch and with a shrill voice cry a joyous welcome to the beacon blaze for ilion's fall such fiery message gleams from yon high flame and i before the rest will foot the lightsome measure of our joy for i can say my master's dice fell fair behold the triple syce the lucky flame now be my lot to clasp in loyal love the hand of him restored who rules our home home but i say no more upon my tongue treads hard the ox of the adage had it voice the home itself might soothliest tell its tale i of set will speak words the wise may learn to others not remember nor discern exit the chorus of old men of mycenae enter each leaning on a staff during their song clytemnestra appears in the background kindling the altars chorus ten livelong years have rolled away since the twin lords of sceptred sway by zeus endowed with pride of place the doughty chiefs of atreus race went forth of yore to plead with priam face to face before the judgment seat of war a thousand ships from argive land put forth to bear the martial band that with a spirit stern and strong went out to right the kingdom's wrong pealed as they went the battle song wild as the vultures cry when o'er the eyrie soaring high in wild bereaved agony around around in airy rings they wheel with orage of their wings but not the aeus brood behold that called them to the nest of old but let apollo from the sky or pan or zeus but hear the cry the exile cry the wail forlorn of birds from whom their home is torn on those who wrought the rapine fell heaven sends the vengeful fiends of hell even so doth zeus the jealous lord and guardian of the hearth and board speed atreus sons in vengeful ire against paris sends them forth on fire her to buy back in war and blood whom one did wed but many wooed and many many by his will the last embrace of foes shall feel and many a knee in dust be bowed and splintered spears on shields ring loud of trojan and of greek before that iron bridal feast be o'er but as he willed tis ordered all and woes by heaven ordained must fall 
unsoothed by tears or spilth of wine poured forth too late the wrath divine glares vengeance on the flameless shrine and we in grey dishonoured eld feeble of frame unfit were held to join the warrior array that then went forth unto the fray and here at home we tarry fain our feeble footsteps to sustain each on his staff so strength doth wane and turns to childishness again for while the sap of youth is green and yet unripened leaps within the young are weakly as the old and each alike unmeet to hold the vantage post of war and ah when flower and fruit are o'er and on life's tree the leaves are sere age wendeth propped its journey drear as forceless as a child as light and fleeting as a dream of night lost in the garish day but thou o child of tyndarius queen clytemnestra speak and say what messenger of joy to-day hath won thine ear what welcome news that thus in sacrificial wise e'en to the city's boundaries thou biddest altar fires arise each god who doth our city guard and keeps o'er argos watch and ward from heaven above from earth below the mighty lords who rule the skies the market's lesser deities to each and all the altars glow piled for the sacrifice and here and there anear afar streams skyward many a beacon star conjured and charmed and kindled well by pure oil's soft and guileless spell hid now no more within the palace secret store o queen we pray thee whatsoe'er known unto thee were well revealed that thou wilt trust it to our ear and bid our anxious heart be healed that waneth now unto despair now waxing to a presage fair dawns from the altar hope to scare from our rent hearts the vulture care list for the power is mine to chant on high the chief's emprise the strength that omens gave list on my soul breathes yet a harmony from realms of ageless powers and strong to save how brother kings twin lords of one command led forth the youth of hellas in their flower urged on their way with vengeful spear and brand by warrior birds that watched the parting hour go forth to troy the eagles seemed to cry and the sea kings obeyed the sky king's word when on the right they soared across the sky and one was black one bore a white tail barred high o'er the palace were they seen to soar then lit in sight of all in rent and tear far from the fields that they should range no more big with her unborn brood a mother hare and one beheld the soldier prophet true and the two chiefs unlike of soul and will in the twy-coloured eagle straight he knew and spake the omen forth for good and ill ah woe and well a day but be the issue fair go forth he cried and priam's town shall fall yet long the time shall be and flock and herd the people's wealth that roam before the wall shall force hew down when fate shall give the word but oh beware lest wrath in heaven abide to dim the glowing battle forge once more and mar the mighty curb of trojan pride the steel of vengeance welded as for war for virgin artemis bears jealous hate against the royal house the eagle pair who rend the unborn brood insatiate yea loathes their banquet on the quivering hair ah woe and well a day but be the issue fair for well she loves the goddess kind and mild the tender new-born cubs of lions bold too weak to range and well the sucking child of every beast that roams by wood and wold so to the lord of heaven she prayeth still nay if it must be be the omen true yet do the visioned eagles presage ill the end be well but crossed with evil too healer apollo be her wrath controlled nor weave the long delay of thwarting gales to war against the danaeans and withhold from the free ocean waves their eager sails she craves alas to see a second life shed forth a cursed unhallowed sacrifice twixt wedded souls artificer of strife and hate that knows not fear and fell device at home there tarries like a lurking snake biding its time a wrath unreconciled a wily watcher passionate to slake in blood resentment for a murdered child such was the mighty warning pealed of yore amid good tidings such the word of fear what time the fateful eagles hovered o'er the kings 
and calchas red the omen clear and leave the league of ships and fail each true ally for rightfully they crave with eager fiery mind the virgin's blood shed forth to lull the adverse wind god send the deed be well thus on his neck he took fate's hard compelling yoke then in the counter gale of will abhorred accursed to recklessness his shifting spirit veered alas that frenzy first of ills and worst with evil craft men's souls to sin hath ever stirred and so he steeled his heart ah well a day aiding a war for one false woman's sake his child to slay and with her spilt blood make an offering to speed the ships upon their way lusting for war the bloody arbiters closed heart and ears and would nor hear nor heed the girl voice plead pity me father nor her prayers nor tender virgin years so when the chant of sacrifice was done her father bade the youthful priestly train raise her like some poor kid above the altar stone from where amid her robes she lay sunk all in swoon away bade them as with the bit that mutely tames the steed her fair lipped speech refrain lest she should speak a curse on atreus home and seed so trailing on the earth her robe of saffron dye with one last piteous dart from her beseeching eye those that should smite she smote fair silent as a pictured form but fain to plead is all forgot how oft those halls of old wherein my sire high feast did hold rang to the virginal soft strain when i a stainless child sang from pure lips and undefiled sang of my sire and all his honoured life and how on him should fall heaven's highest gift and gain and then but i beheld not nor can tell what further fate befell but this is sure that calchas boding strain can ne'er be void or vain this wage from justice hand do sufferers earn the future to discern and yet farewell o secret of to-morrow foreknowledge is for sorrow clear with the clear beams of the morrow's sun the future presseth on now let the house's tale how dark so e'er find yet an issue fair so prays the loyal solitary band that guards the apian land they turn to clytemnestra who leaves the altars and comes forward o queen i come in reverence of thy sway for while the ruler's kingly seat is void the loyal heart before his consort bends now be it sure and certain news of good or the fair tidings of a flattering hope that bids thee spread the light from shrine to shrine ay fain to hear yet grudge not if thou hide clytemnestra as saith the adage from the womb of night spring forth with promise fair the young child light i fairer even than all hope my news by grecian hands is priam's city tain chorus what sayest thou doubtful heart makes treacherous ear clytemnestra hear then again and plainly troy is ours chorus thrills through my heart such joy as wakens tears clytemnestra i through those tears thine eye looks loyalty chorus but hast thou proof to make assurance sure clytemnestra go to i have unless the god has lied chorus hath some night vision won thee to belief clytemnestra out on all presage of a slumbrous soul chorus but wert thou cheered by rumour's wingless word clytemnestra peace thou dost chide me as a credulous girl chorus say then how long ago the city fell clytemnestra even in this night that now brings forth the dawn chorus yet who so swift could speed the message here clytemnestra from ida's top hephaestus lord of fire sent forth his sign and on and ever on beacon to beacon sped the courier flame from ida to the crag that hermes loves of lemnos thence unto the steep sublime of athos throne of zeus the broad blaze flared thence raised aloft to shoot across the sea the moving light rejoicing in its strength sped from the pyre of pine and urged its way in golden glory like some strange new sun onward and reached machistus watching heights there with no dull delay nor heedless sleep the watcher sped the tidings on in turn 
until the guard upon mesapius peak saw the fair flame gleam on Europus tide and from the high-piled heap of withered firs lit the new sign and bade the message on then the strong light far flown and yet undimmed shot through the sky above asopus plain bright as the moon and on Catharan's crag aroused another watch of flying fire and there the sentinels no whit disowned but sent redoubled on the hest of flame swift shot the light above gorgopis bay to egiplanctus mount and bade the peak fail not the onward ordinance of fire and like a long beard streaming in the wind full fed with fuel roared and rose the blaze and onward flaring gleamed above the cape beneath which shimmers the saronic bay and thence leapt light unto arachne's peak the mountain watch that looks upon our town thence to the atreides roof in lineage fair a bright posterity of ida's fire so sped from stage to stage fulfilled in turn flame after flame along the course ordained and lo the last to speed upon its way sights the end first and glows unto the goal and troy is ta'en and by this sign my lord tells me the tale and ye have learned my word chorus to heaven o queen will i upraise new song but wouldst thou speak once more i fain would hear from first to last the marvel of the tale clytemnestra think you this very morn the greeks in troy and loud therein the voice of utter wail within one cup pour vinegar and oil and look unblent unreconciled they wore so in the twofold issue of the strife mingle the victors shout the captives moan for all the conquered whom the sword has spared cling weeping some unto a brother slain some childlike to a nursing father's form and wail the loved and lost the while their neck bows down already neath the captive's chain and lo the victors now the fight is done goaded by restless hunger far and wide range all disordered through the town to snatch such victual and such rest as chance may give within the captive halls that once were troy joyful to rid them of the frost and dew wherein they couched upon the plain of old joyful to sleep the gracious night all through unsummoned of the watching sentinel yet let them reverence well the city's gods the lords of troy though fallen and her shrines so shall the spoilers not in turn be spoiled yea let no craving for forbidden gain bid conquerors yield before the darts of greed for we need yet before the race be won homewards unharmed to round the course once more for should the host wax wanton ere it come then though the sudden blow of fate be spared yet in the sight of god shall rise once more the great wrong of the slain to claim revenge now hearing from this woman's mouth of mine the tale and eke its warning pray with me luck sway the scale with no uncertain poise for my fair hopes are changed to fairer joys chorus a gracious word thy woman's lips have told worthy a wise man's utterance o my queen now with clear trust in thy convincing tale i set me to salute the gods with song who bring us bliss to counterpoise our pain exit clytemnestra zeus lord of heaven and welcome knight of victory that hast our might with all the glories crowned on towers of ilion free no more hast flung the mighty mesh of war and closely girt them round till neither warrior may scape nor stripling lightly overleap the trammels as they close and close till with a grip of doom our foes in slavery's coil are bound zeus lord of hospitality in grateful awe i bend to thee tis thou hast struck the blow at alexander long ago we marked thee bend thy vengeful bow but long and warily withhold the eager shaft which uncontrolled and loosed too soon or launched too high had wandered bloodless through the sky zeus the high god whate'er be dim in doubt this can our thought track out the blow that fells the sinner is of god and as he wills the rod of vengeance smiteth sore one said of old the gods list not to hold a reckoning with him whose feet oppress the grace of holiness an impious word 
for whensoe'er the sire breathed forth rebellious fire what time his household overflowed the measure of bliss and health and treasure his children's children read the reckoning plain at last in tears and pain on me let weal that brings no woe be sent and therewith all content who spurns the shrine of right nor wealth nor power shall be to him a tower to guard him from the gulf there lies his lot where all things are forgot lust drives him on lust desperate and wild fate's sin contriving child and cure is none beyond concealment clear kindles sin's baleful glare as an ill coin beneath the wearing touch betrays by stain and smutch its metal false such is the sinful wight before on pinion's light fair pleasure flits and lures him childlike on while home and kin make moan beneath the grinding burden of his crime till in the end of time cast down of heaven he pours forth fruitless prayer to powers that will not hear and such did paris come unto atreides home and thence with sin and shame his welcome to repay ravish the wife away and she unto her country and her kin leaving the clash of shields and spears and arming ships and bearing unto troy destruction for a dower and overbold in sin went fleetly through the gates at midnight hour off from the prophet's lips moaned out the warning and the wail ah woe woe for the home the home and for the chieftain's woe woe for the bride-bed warm yet from the lovely limbs the impress of the form of her who loved her lord a while ago and woe for him who stands shamed silent unreproachful stretching hands that find her not and sees yet will not see that she is far away and his sad fancy yearning o'er the sea shall summon and recall her wraith once more to queen it in his hall and sad with many memories the fair cold beauty of each sculptured face and all to hatefulness is turned her grace seen blankly by forlorn and hungering eyes and when the night is deep come visions sweet and sad and bearing pain of hopings vain void void and vain for scarce the sleeping sight has seen its old delight when through the grasps of love that bid it stay it vanishes away on silent wings that roam adown the ways of sleep such are the sights the sorrows fell above our hearth and worse whereof i may not tell but all the wide town o'er each home that sent its master far away from hellish shore feels the keen thrill of heart the pang of loss to-day for truth to say the touch of bitter death is manifold familiar was each face and dear as life that went unto the war but thither whence a warrior went of old doth not return only a spear and sword and ashes in an urn for ares lord of strife who doth the swaying scales of battle hold war's money-changer giving dust for gold sends back to hearts that held them dear scant ash of warriors wept with many a tear light to the hand but heavy to the soul yea fills the light urn full with what survived the flame death's dusty measure of a hero's frame alas one cries and yet alas again our chief is gone the hero of the spear and hath not left his peer ah woe another moans my spouse is slain the death of honour rolled in dust and blood slain for a woman's sin a false wife's shame such muttered words of bitter mood rise against those who went forth to reclaim yea jealous wrath creeps on against the atreides name and others far beneath the ilian wall sleep their last sleep the goodly chiefs and tall couched in the foeman's land whereon they gave their breath and lords of troy each in his trojan grave end of part one recording by expatriate in bangor maine